High school football from across the desert southwest is here. Varsity Blitz starts right now. You're watching Varsity Blitz on 13 on your side. A Hall of Fame welcome to week seven of the Varsity Blitz alongside Brandon Mejia. I'm Scott Gross. Yeah, it doesn't get better than that. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Good to be back alongside with you, my friend. And well, we begin with the crosstown rivalry in Yuma, the Cibola Raiders and, well, the Yuma Criminals. It's been a lopsided rivalry, if you want to call it a <laughs> rivalry. Cibola on the winning side 15 straight times dating back to 2008. The Criminals haven't played since September 10th due to COVID concerns and a bye week. Would they be refreshed and ready? And one would hope. One would hope. Meanwhile, Cibola notched their first win of the season last week over Westview, 38-25. to The Raiders tonight look to make it two in a row, while Yuma looks to snap that losing streak to Cibola tonight. So, without further ado, to Raider Field we go, as, yes, they welcome the Crims in all their glory and hoping to take one on the road. The Raiders ready to put up a fight. The Crims, though, would get things started as it's Jesus Villapuela who's going to find a hole, hits the sidestep, but gets lit up by Josea Ramos. Uh, okay, Reggie Antone this time on the next play, going to connect with Manuel Garcia. Shakes off the defender, finds a wide open lane to the end zone. Crims, yes, striking first on the road. Could they keep it going? Or could Cibola answer? Well, we go to the unsuing kickoff, and uh, more like a squib kick on that one. Isaac Lopez able to pick it up, but he's going to run into some trouble here, folks, as he gets kind of backed up and whoop! The ball pops out. You can't see it. The dog pile ensues. The Crims come up with it. Yes, back on offense. And Antone right now connecting this time with Tamari Patterson, who puts on the Jets. He can't be stopped. Just like that. The Crims double their lead. Yes, we are watching this happen. Up 14-0. The Raiders hoping to get something going now. Andre Acosta finds Adrian Molina on the wing, but Jesus again there to pull him down. So... Acosta now trying to get things going again in shotgun gonna look around and at this point says I'm gonna have to make something myself happen here and he will for a short play short of the first down but uh, that's okay a few plays later and this time Acosta again he's gonna connect with Isaac Lopez who watch this avoids the tackle and a great block right here gets him into the end zone how about that Cibola gets on the board and they would actually climb back in this nail biter they take went 35 to 28. To Buckeye Field where the Antelope Rams and head coach Gary Malden looking to get back in the win column against the uh, Tonopah Valley Phoenix. There's the Phoenix. They're ready to go as well. And the Welton res first responders looking to, and waiting to sound the alarms as well when they score. Opening drive, Tonopah Valley inside the Ram 20. They give to the right side. Nemo Cox is there for the Rams and he jars the ball loose. John Whitley is there for the recovery. Rams ball. Rams inside their own 20 and fourth and one. Yeah, their own 20, fourth and one. They go for it. Jose Soto, they call him Butter, oozes his way <laughs> to a first down. Later in the drive, they give it to Ivan Lopez. He takes a shot. Later, Rams would have to punt to the second quarter. Tonopah Valley tries to run, but Javier Solis is there to disrupt the play for a loss. Moments later, Tonopah Valley back to pass. It's been in the air by Butta. He's Butta. He's smooth. Jose Soto catches his own reflection, then drags the defender behind him. Yes, Butter is on a roll. Rams would take advantage. John Whitley finds Keenan Regals. Next, he's going to find another wide receiver inside the five-yard line, and that'll set up, guess what? The fullback, Jose Butter Soto, glides his way into the end zone. Antelope on board first, and they go on to win this one by a score of 24 to 6. I like what I see. We go to Wardfield as the dogs host coach Rookie Pena and the Central Spartans, a packed crowd on hand with the winner making an early case for the IVL title. And Central's first quarterback drive, Damian Rodriguez drops back, and then he's dropped. Uh, that's Diego Guerrero making the play and pushing the Spartans way back for a third in long, but they would gain ground and put it on the ground here with Charlie Sullivan, who barrels his way to pick up the first down on fourth down, the second fourth down conversion on the drive for Central. Yes, next play, Rodriguez going to hit him with the pump fake and fakes out the cameraman, but doesn't fake out Andrew Rivera. Gets a hand on it to take away a score. That's all right. Two plays later, they go right back to the air game, and Rodriguez throws a strike to Gavin Marini for six. Beautiful grab for the junior, and the Spartans strike four. First, how about that? After Calexico's offensive stalled on the, their first drive, they set up a punt, but oh no, oh no. That ball takes a rough bounce, deflects off Elijah Perez. Live ball, and Andres Ramirez jumps on top of it. A potential momentum swinger deep in Spartan territory now. Ernesto Sanchez takes his hand off, jukes and dives around a couple tackles there. 
needed a whole pile to take him down. How about that? But their drive, Woodstall on fourth down at Central makes them pay. Here's Rodriguez again, rolls out right to his right. He's scanning downfield, and look at that deep ball. Sergio Garcia, the freshman, hauls it in, takes it the distance, 70 yards that is. The Spartans up 14 after the extra point and really gaining control of this game. Central wins tonight 42-6. to six. Did you know breast cancer kills more than 41,000 people every year in the U.S.? That's 113 people every day. That's unacceptable. African-American women die from breast cancer nearly 41% more than Caucasian women. That's unacceptable. Nearly 250,000 men and women in the U.S. will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. That's unacceptable. Breast cancer is the leading cause of all cancer deaths for Hispanic women. Breast cancer is unacceptable. 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 Help us save lives. Together with Susan G. Komen, we're committed to reducing U.S. breast cancer deaths by half. And we're going to do it by 2026. Support Susan G. Komen. Join our fight. Save lives. Visit Komen.org slash unacceptable. Failure is unacceptable. Every picture has a story. At Doctors Without Borders, it's our mission to change those stories. Because thousands of children are still dying of measles. We're there with preventative medical care. Because every day, hundreds of women die from causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. We're there to assist hundreds of thousands. Because in some countries, there are only one or two mental health professionals. We're there to provide support, counseling, and clinical care. It's your care and compassion that make this happen. Picture the impact we can have together. Addiction doesn't have to chip apart your family and destroy your life. Before you lose your job, your family, your life, call Crossroads Mission for a free addiction assessment. Crossroads Mission has multiple services to stabilize family members and help piece your lives back together. Beating addiction starts with a desire to change. You can become the person you are destined to be. For advice, help, or hope, call 928-328-8082. You're watching Varsity Blitz. The best highlights, the best plays, continuing right now. And welcome back. It is week seven of the Varsity Blitz. Scott Gross along with Brandon Mejia. Last night was a special Thursday night edition of Prep Football with the Imperial Tigers traveling to Burger Field to take on the undefeated Holtville Vikings. Yeah, Holtville entered the game 5-0 and and well-rested coming off their bye week last week. Meanwhile, the Imperial Tigers came to Holtville riding a three-game win streak and there was a lot on the line last night. Imperial, a 3A school, is much larger than a 5A Holtville Vikings squad. <laughs> They certainly you know, <laughs> didn't want to fall to a team yeah. many feel they should beat. Hopeville, on the other hand, was in search for its first ever win against Imperial under head coach Jason Turner. That dates back to 2018. Let's find out what happened, shall we? <laughs> The Burger Field and the student section in full force, along with these little buckaroos <laughs> for Pop Warner Day, cheering on the 5-0 and Vikings at home against the 3-2 and Imperial Tigers. Opening kickoff. It's going to be fielded by Holtfield's Dorian Mays. And check this out. At the 20-yard line, he's going to run all the way to his sideline, to his own 20-yard line. Then he's going to turn it upfield, make a few moves, get a few blocks, and Mays is loose. It's an 80-yard touchdown run to start the game. Holtfield would get the two-point conversion. They're up 8 nothing. On Imperial's second drive of the game, C.J. Tiernan takes the handoff off the right side and scampers for a 20-yard first down before he's ushered out of bounds. Later on the drive, it'll be Seth Schaub burrowing his way down to the one-yard line. And on fourth and goal, 
Reese Vindiola passes to Zach Ray, who can't hang on to the ball. Peyton Eitan is there, too. Vikings break it up. They make a defensive stand. Holfield with the ball. Early second quarter, Spencer Hilficker with the keeper and plows ahead for a chunk of yards. Vikings eventually would have to punt. Late second quarter, Imperial on the move inside the 10. Again, it's fourth and goal this time. Tiernan with the fake. Faked me out. Fooled our camera guy. Tiernan with the score. The extra point is good. Tigers down 8-7 to the fourth quarter we go. Again, it's Imperial. Again, it's Tiernan with the score. Late, 14-8. That is your final score. Hard fought defensive battle in Holtville. And congratulations to uh, Imperial on another win. Thank you to Valley Sports Network for the additional coverage. In the jumping back in action from today, Luis Lopez joining us live in studio to continue our coverage. Luis. Welcome again. And uh, Brawley looking for their fifth straight win tonight, Luis, in Southwest. Looking to get back to 500. Tell us how it turned out. Brandon, Scott, great to be with you guys in the studio tonight. Why don't we head out to Eagle Field now, where the Southwest High School Eagles would take on the Brawley Wildcats. Early in the first quarter, the Wildcats are, as you get a look at the establisher shot here, early in the first quarter, the Wildcats are going to hand it off to number 24, Gilbert Corrales, who puts a quick move on the defense to go four yards for the first down. Very next play, Wildcats. They're going to get it to number 42, fullback Tanner Carranza. The whole backfield getting involved in this one. That's good for 10 yards and another first down. Brawley now in the red zone for the first time in the ball game. Wildcat quarterback Ethan Gutierrez is going to fake the handoff to Carranza. He's going to keep it himself, put some moves on, make his way towards the sideline, and take it all the way in for the touchdown. 27 yards to the house. Brawley strikes first. Extra point would be good. They go up seven to nothing. Now Eagles would throw an interception on the following drive. Brawley now with a chance to add on to their lead. Gutierrez to the other sideline now. Another keeper for the junior QB. Twice as nice. Gutierrez goes 30 yards this time for his second touchdown of the game. Wildcats now up 14 nothing. Southwest would try to get back into this one. Eagle running back number 22, Estevan McDonough. Making it happen with a five-yard run, good for a first down. Eagles would end the first quarter in the red zone to the second quarter now. Southwest sophomore quarterback, Logan Jungers, is going to take the high snap. He's going to toss it up, but it's picked off. Brawley DB Robert Platt with his second pick of the game. Eagles are denied in the end zone. Brawley dominates in this one. They take the Eagles down by a score of 50 to 6. We take you to Veterans Field now as the Hornets look to keep their two-game winning streak alive as they welcome Palo Verde. And the Yellow Jackets putting on the pressure. Calipatria early. Kalen Satello able to bring him down inside the 10. Next play, the Yellow Jackets are going to blast through this front line. Pow! There it is. And they're going to get the touchdown. Extra point is going to be coming up. Palo Verde. Having their way with this one, the extra point splits the upright 7 nothing. Now, the Horn is going to be the kickoff. And Calipatria, the Hornets, will take it inside their own 20-yard line. It's going to be a decent return to their own sidelines, and they'll set up shop right there. Jacob Zendejas and the Horken Hornets offense come out. Zendejas takes it himself, moving the chain to the 48-yard line. They would eventually turn it over, however, in that drive. Yellow Jackets back on defense, looking for the air on this play. But a, a great defensive effort is going to be coming up right there. Nope, you're not going to get it. Hornets hanging on. Yellow Jackets still moving down the field. But the run game would be too much to handle for the Hornets on this next play. Anthony Richards finds room, and he goes all the way down the sideline. And Richards is loose. Touchdown. And it's going to be Palo Verde. 42-6 to six over Calipatria. Real quickly, our out-of-town scoreboard. Yes, let's take a look at these quick final matches here. And as we proceed to the next one, we can get you caught up on the other games from out of town. Before we have to wrap things up here, your final Kofa falling 47-6. And, of course, one last game to show you Gila Ridge falling as well. San Pasquale keeping it close, but taking a loss as well. we got to leave you with this. we got to leave you with today's best. Yes, uh, today's best. And there's our, the main man, Omar, in the control room. <laughs> He's pushing all the right buttons for you. Thank you to everybody. Luis, uh, Rob. Fram, Cole Johnson, we had Jonathan Busco who does a lot of our, our graphics for us, Marina, George, George, yes. The list goes on and on, wouldn't be possible without Adam you guys. Adonis, helping Chris with the scoreboard. Oh, absolutely. Another successful week seven in the books, folks. Omar, keeping it going. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you back here for week eight.